Okay, uh, those of you familiar with uh, some of my other videos will uh, recognise the PMR uh, steam boiler on the left hand side which was built from uh, a kit bought from PMR in America. Uh, and on the right hand side we've got the Clarkson model steam engine which uh, I resurrected from uh, a few badly machined castings. And again it's subject to a, another of my videos. Um, but here we've got the Clarkson running under steam for the first time. Uh, prior to this it's only ever run on compressed air. So it, it's good to see it running on steam. And it, it's interesting to note how uh, uh, much better it runs on steam rather than compressed air. It, it, uh, it runs a little bit quieter. Um, and also it runs slower. Which uh, is probably due to the expansive effect of steam rather than the harshness of uh, compressed air. Um, you, you'll have to excuse all the drips and dribbles, um, uh, there's various things that need tightening up and adjusting I think, uh, which I'll get around to uh, after making this video, but uh, at least you can see the engine running. And you'll see that the exhaust from the engine has been fed via this pipe here into the smokestack or the chimney for the boiler, which is amplifying the sound of the engine as it runs quite well and uh, I quite enjoy that. Uh, the disadvantage is that it does feed some condensate through into the chimney stack and this can drip down into the smoke box whilst the, uh, everything's getting warmed up. But uh, it's up to temperature now and uh, it's all seems to be running quite well. Coming around this side you can see the uh, perspex cover on the steam chest here which I've left on the benefit of this video, although there's quite a bit of condensation in there so you can't really see too much of what's going on, but I think we can just about make out the slide valve going up and down there. And the uh, engine's running there in forward gear. Uh, coming around this side, you can see the handle which changes the direction of the engine, that's this lever here. And we'll have a go at that in a minute. But just back onto the boiler, you can see the Slight glass there which shows that the water now is dropping slightly and we do it a little bit more in. So, whilst you're watching the engine go around, I'll just uh, put a little bit more water in the boiler. Okay, so what I'll do now, I'll just stop the engine and uh, change the motion by pushing that lever down which pushes the Stevenson's link across and the valve travel now is governed by this particular eccentric which should, should send the engine in an anti-clockwise direction so there we are, it's pushed over and we'll turn the steam back on and see what happens there we are. So the engine is running again now in reverse flywheel going anti-clockwise you can see the, here the bubbling and the gurgling as the condensate clears the uh, exhaust pipe. So I'll just actually try uh, notching up the uh, valve gear by lifting this lever, moving the Stevenson's link across towards the central position. And this should mean that the uh, engine can run on uh, slightly less steam. Let's just see what happens there. It's coming across now. Hear the engine note changing. The engine's still running. The speed's slowing down because there's less steam actually coming into the engine there. But this is what pretty much happens on a, a locomotive as the notch up as the uh, locomotive gets up to speed. This enables the uh, uh, boiler on the locomotive to cope much better the demands placed on it. So I'll, I'll push the lever down again back into full gear or full valve travel and you should hear the change in the exhaust note. So pushing the lever down now and the engine's responding by speeding up as well because it's getting actually more steam. So I'll just turn that down a bit. So reducing the steam there the engine ticking over quite nicely, very slowly. 
It's a bit too slow. It's a bit lumpy there. There we are. It's quite good. I'll just turn the steam off again. Put it back into forward running. See what happens this time. Start it straight away. Blow. Little bit more st speed on the engine. And you can hear the uh, chuffing now from the chimney stack of the engine whizzes round at speed. The PMR boiler is uh, well worth buying and building if you don't have a boiler. Uh, it's quite a capable boiler and you can see it runs an engine of this size quite well. Uh, it's more than up to it. Um, this engine for instance has got a one inch bore and a one and a half inch stroke. And it goes with that no problem. Okay, thanks for watching.